Medistand. Understanding Medicine. I'm Professor Azizur Rahman, and we are discussing various ECG abnormalities, and we are going to take up another topic. This is the curriculum. We have covered these topics marked in orange, and today we are going to take up this next topic, atrial enlargement. Now, let me uh, first say that atrial enlargement may not be an absolutely great finding on ECG, uh, but it will definitely help you to reach another diagnosis. Uh, atrial enlargement in itself could be actually a problem, uh, but mostly it is part of another valvular disease, congenital disease or sometime a, a neoplastic disease and we can tell that this chamber left atrium or right atrium is enlarged and that is all we can tell when it comes to atria. We can't tell more uh, than simple enlargement. In fact, some authors say it should be called a left atrial or right atrial abnormality rather than enlargement but I think I would follow the convention. It is certainly possible to make a guess on ECG that left atrium or right atrium or both atria are enlarged. So how will that help in the proper clinical setup? For example, if there is a, a clinical situation, you are not sure if it is mitral regurgitation or mitral stenosis. Uh, uh, sorry, mitral regurgitation. Uh, or aortic regurgitation. Let's take these two examples. So in mitral regurgitation, you expect left atrial enlargement, whereas in aortic regurgitation, that abnormality is not expected. Uh, so I think that can differentiate. Right-sided disease versus left-sided disease. If you see a right atrial enlargement, it will typically give you a short list of possibilities. So I think we will discuss those possibilities also, but let me first explain to you how we find out if there is atrial enlargement. Uh, before we discuss uh, the abnormalities, I would like to demonstrate how P wave is formed. You all know that on ECG, the P wave represents atrial depolarization. Normal P wave is actually summation of both left and right atrial depolarization. Because the pacemaker is in the right atrium and right atrial depolarization will start immediately after the current exits a SA node and then it will spread to the whole of the right atrium and including left atrium. Now you can imagine that right atrium, most of the right atrium is closer to SNO, so the depolarization will start from the right atrium. But before right atrial depolarization completes, some parts of left area atrium could be actually closer to SNO than some parts of right atrium. So before right atrial depolarization is completed, left atrial depolarization also starts. So, and the, then at the end, left atrial depolarization also uh, finishes. So, in a normal P wave, the very initial part will be only right atrial depolarization, and very last part will be only left atrial depolarization, and most of the middle part is actually represented by both atrial depolarization. Now, let me uh, try to explain to you how is this made, and with the help of a graph. And whenever we look at the morphology of P wave, we choose either limb lead 2 or precordial lead 2. Because of the relationship of these leads to these two chambers, uh, the atrial depolarization is best shown in these two leads. So we can study P wave uh, duration, height, morphology in much better uh, detail if you study limb lead 2 and precordial uh, V2. 
Now let me explain how this normal wave is formed. Now imagine there is only a right atrium and this is the right atrial depolarization. Okay, uh, current starts from here, right atrium depolarizes and then completes. This is purely theoretical situation. Imagine there is only a right atrium and that is the depolarization wave. Now this is another situation. You just imagine there is only left atrium and this is will be a depolarization wave because it's slight distance from the SNO depolarization will start later after right atrial depolarization and will end later also because part of uh, uh, left atrium is quite far from the SNO. So these two are two different electrical phenomena but they represent as one wave on ECG. So that one wave would be a summation of these two waves and it would be like something like this one, like this one. I hope I was able to make the concept clear. So this wave, the P wave is actually summation of right and left atrial depolarization in Lemley 2. This part is only right atrial depolarization. This part is only left atrial depolarization, but most of it is uh, by atrial depolarization and I'm not sure if you can appreciate but there is slight uh, indentation here indicating that this wave actually consists of two different waves. Now let's take the example of uh, precordyleids. Now before we take actually that these both waves were upward. Why? Because as far as Lemley 2 is concerned uh, you know Lemley 2 is like this one uh, the positive terminal is on plus 60 degree along cardiac axis. So since both atria are almost in the same direction, uh, so the current is flowing toward the electrode, so both are recorded upward. But the case may be slightly different when we examine precordyleids. Now first right atrial depolarization, uh, it's just like the same one. When it right uh, atrium, uh, the current is flowing toward the V2. But the left atrium is actually situated on the back side and the V2 is on the front side. So V2 will record left atrial depolarization as negative deflection. And like the previous one, it would start after uh, right, uh, left, uh, right atrial depolarization, it starts later and it ends later. Okay. Now, if you try to make a submission wave of these two, one is upward, the other is downward, then the submission wave would be something like this. So, in a normal person, you would expect P wave like this in V2. So, the criteria is that in a normal person, P wave should be either bifid like this one, slight uh, indentation is bifid, or biphasic, that means the initial part upward, the later part downward, uh, but duration should be less than 2.5 small squares. If you, you calculate the duration, it should be less than 2.5 small square, and height should also be less than 2.5 small squares. Morphology any morphology is acceptable that this is the duration and this is the height of a normal P wave. Now let me show you an example and then we come to uh, this kind of picture again. This is an ECG and let me see if you can figure out if you see this strip. Do you see the P wave? P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S. And there is some hypertrophy pattern in the ventricles also, but forget it. We are just discussing atrial enlargement. And if you study this lead, and I told you that for P wave, we study either Lemley 2 or uh, V2. Now, if you can see, this is Lemley 2, and you have bifid. Uh, P wave and it looks quite broad and if you see V2 it is biphasic you can see a clear cut 
downward deflection also. So what do you think is the diagnosis? See this one? It is P mitral. What is P mitral? P mitral is a P wave which fulfills two criteria. One, it is bro broader than 2.5 small square. And number two, it has got a specific morphology. And specific morphology is that second wave, since it is because of the enlargement of the left atrium, the second wave out of the two waves I explained is bigger. The second component actually, the second component of P wave is bigger. So it will become broader and it will also become biphasic uh, and uh, that is P mitral. So a P wave which has got duration more than 0 0.12 uh, uh, seconds. Actually uh, uh, the 2.5 small square is equivalent to uh, 10 seconds, point, point 0.10 seconds. So it is broader than that and it is bifid or biphasic. Bifid means it is just like a camel hump. You can see both two waves or you, it could be biphasic morphology. I'm going to explain to you in the next video in this slide uh, how is this made. So this is P mitral. If P mitral is present on the ECG, all you know is the left atrium is enlarged. It could be mitral stenosis, it could be mitral regurgitation, it could be mixed mitral valve disease, it may be left atrial myxoma. Some degree of left atrial enlargement may also be seen in uh, left ventricular hypertrophy and we will discuss that later. Now let me explain how P mitral is made in uh, uh, the same graphs. This is the first one. Since a right atrium is unaffected, right atrium will have its normal wave component. But this second component, if you remember the previous one, this component, second component has become more prominent. And since and it has become more prominent and it has become uh, wide also. So it would the because left atrial mass has increased, so the left atrial depolarization will take much longer time and it will finish much after uh, the right atrial depolarization, resulting in the morphology, this one, bifid. So in limb lead, you have a broad uh, P wave, broader than 0.12 seconds, and it has got this bifid morphology and in an ideal case the second deflection is bigger than the first one okay so that is limb lead 2 and when we come to precordial leads let's see and uh, this is right atrial depolarization it is unaffected and this is left atrial depolarization which has become deeper and broader because it is left atrial component and net result is that it will result in a bifid, uh, sorry, biphasic, biphasic P wave. And in a typical case, this downward deflection, the later part of uh, P wave would be bigger. So area under cover, if you draw a line here, the area under cover of this complex and area under cover of this one, this will be bigger because the left atrium is bigger, left atrial component to the P wave is bigger. So this is how a P mitral is made. The duration of more than 0.12. Of course, duration has to increase because now left atrial depolarization is taking more time to complete. But the amplitude actually does not increase. But this the typical morphology biphasic or bifid will become. And the second deflection or the second part would be bigger. So I hope I was able to explain to you what P mitral is and how the uh, physical changes translate into ECG changes. Now we are going to examine another lead, uh, another ECG now. This one. So if you scan uh, uh, this lead from this side, like this one, what do you see? 
it is sinus rhythm you know all p waves which precede qrs complexes they are quite tall they are quite prominent see these are this looks actually taller than the same complex the qrs complex what is this it is p pulmonal p pulmonal indicates a right atrial enlargement you can see here also it is quite tall and here also look at this one quite deep so in in v1 deep would mean the same as the tall here so p um, there is a p pulmonaire indicating a right atrial enlargement from this the, we will draw an inference that there is some pathology which is causing right atrial enlargement it may be uh, left sided heart disease causing pulmonary hypertension it may be primary pulmonary hypertension it may be pulmonary embolism uh, it may be very common condition copd uh, but any of these condition is causing a right atrial enlargement in uh, representing uh, showing in the form of p pulmonaire like i explained in p mitral i would try to explain how is this p pulmonaire made the criteria is very simple only one criteria is that the p wave is taller than 2.5 small squares 2.5 mm is the same as 2.5 small squares so it would be taller than that some authors use the criteria of 3 now if it is taller than 3 and every time you apply the criteria of height you have to make sure that ecg is recorded at standard deflection not double deflection so if ecg is recorded at standard deflection and the height of p wave is more than 2.5 and particularly if it is more than 3 you would say that there is p pulmonal the criteria of duration is not there criteria of any specific morphology is also not there let's see how it is made so limbly 2 this is the first component right atrial component it is more prominent than usual now left atrial component will start late but will end in its time because left atrium is not a large right atrium will uh, have a taller and broader wave but still it will finish with or before left atrial depolarization so even if right atrial forces are increased right uh, atrial component of p wave is increased in its uh, height and breadth but total duration of p wave will not increase because the ending time is the same so that is the explanation why in p pulmonaire we do not have a uh, duration criteria and if we uh, put these waves one on the top of other you will have a tall p wave so this is p pulmonaire you have a tall uh, p wave in limb l2 now in that that is only criteria and uh, uh, i think this should help you to differentiate between p mitral and p pulmonaire in some cases you might actually have by atrial enlargement and how would you say this is by atrial enlargement if there is an ecg where p wave fulfills both criteria it has got a duration more than 0.12 seconds and it has got specific morphology of p mitral plus it has got height of more than 2.5 so that would indicate by atrial enlargement this is professor aziz rahman i hope i was able to explain p mitral and p pulmonaire and i hope that you will be able to identify this abnormality whenever you encounter uh, i really look forward to see you in my next video professor aziz rahman from medstand where everything is free thank you